Here's the lake. Been driving around it for about an hour trying to find a place to park to get on. So I'm just gonna drive down to these people's camps down here and ask someone if I can just go across their yard because this is getting stupid. I wasted about an hour just trying to find a freaking place to get on the lake. All right. All right, so I made it out on the lake, guys. <clears throat> it's a pretty small lake for main standards anyways. These people over here in this camp, nice people that live there, uh, they let me walk across their property, so that's how I got on. Got the one man, one hola. Not much snow, so it's good going. And uh, this is just where I popped out, and this is actually one of the deeper spots of the lake right around here somewhere. So I'm gonna start punching a few holes, try to get the depth I want. I'm doing some hiking today, maybe. It's a nice fish. Crappie. Nice little crappie, guys. That guy, guys. Oh, Ah, man. Dude, they're stacked right up down there right now. See how that jig is hanging horizontally now because he hit it? you want to do is take your jig and move your line to the back pull it and then that'll make it hang straight for a little while until they hit it again you want to do that every time you get a bump because they more likely to hit it when it's when it's sitting uh, horizontally in the water instead of vertically you guys can see this These, this thick bar right here, this is bottom, the bottom black line. This is fish. There's about four fish right there. And then right above it is my lure. You can see my lure go up. Maybe. Yep, yeah, see my lure going up and then down. And I can get those fish on bottom to move and follow my lure, but they're just not biting, they're not feeding. The ones that have been catching have been up by up around 10 feet, so hoping more are going to start coming in in that suspended zone and I'll start catching a few more. Ooh, here's somebody. Oh! Oh, it's bigger. Wrapping the transducer, of course. perch. Let them go. Dude, they're coming right up at it. Oh, they're all nice too. There's one. The biggest crappie ever known to man. There he is, folks. Look at that beast. I'm going to release him. So we can go spawn. Another crappie. Good fillers anyways. There we go. Got him. That's a better crappie. There's two for the dinner table. Alright guys, well I guess it's not going to happen. Probably should have stayed out where I was getting all those bites before, but... So I guess I'm going to pack up and head out of here. Ah, gotcha. Come here, you bugger.
Hey guys, so we're back home. Uh, I got my couple fish that I kept. I let that bigger one go, and I kept two of the medium-sized ones um, to eat. But I'm not gonna eat them tonight. I'm just gonna clean them out, fillet them. Then we're just gonna use some food saver bags and put them in the freezer. First thing you wanna do, so here where this little fin is, I'm gonna cut from there all the way up into the spine. There we go. And then I'm gonna go right along the top of the back. Try not to miss a lot of the meat up in here. That's where most of the meat's gonna be probably. I'm glad I'm wearing this glove because my knife is duller than hell, so I'll probably slip and cut myself. You can hear it running right along the backbone there. And crappy, they have a rib cage that runs right around in here, and so you won't be able to stick your knife all the way through and just fillet it off because you'll get some of those bones from the ribs. So once you get down past the rib cage, you can you'll kind of feel it when you're cutting along. This will be a good fillet here. You just keep working it. You see the rib cage right there. There won't be much meat right, right around that rib. But you can basically stick your knife out right there and then just work it back right to the end of the tail. And there's one. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you how to skin this fillet right here. And it's pretty simple. If you just take a fork or you can use a fingernail if you have them, which I don't. But uh, you stick it, stick your fingernail or, or a fork right on the very end of the uh, fillet right here. And just kind of run your knife along it, right in between the skin and the meat. And then you can just kind of run it right along the top of the skin. And the knife pretty much just follows it. Just kind of work it back and forth and your fork is holding the skin in place. There. With a nice little fillet right there. So we want to vacuum. So there we go guys, we got some nice uh, little fillets. I, I never said I was a master crappy fillet or anything, but the meat's there. Um, it's not really going to be enough for a meal, but it'll be a good snack when we're out in the smelt shack. So hopefully we'll have some smelts to cook along with it. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you later.